outro cast. Hello. Hey, how's it going there, Crystal? Good, how are you? Good, thank you very much. Are you dialing in from Los Angeles? Orange County, but yeah, close enough. Step one <laughs> more. There you go. Well, yes. <laughs> we were connected to talk about Together We Can. When did you actually finish the album? I know it comes out on May 13th. I would say I finally had my last day in the studio a week ago. <laughs> but it's been done. It's been like... We've just been tweaking mixes and sending things to mastering and that kind of thing. But um, yeah, it's not long ago. <laughs> That's a unique kind of answer. Sometimes when I speak with people over the last you know, year and a half, two years, I say, when you finish the album, they go two years ago and they just didn't feel right putting out a pandemic album. And then there's other people who are actually working on the mixing and the mastering. Have you always been hands on with the mix and the master and those details? Not as much in years past. It's a newer thing. Last six years, five, six years or so. Yeah, I've become, I'm the oldest of three girls. So I've always been like kind of bossy, but it's just sort of snowballed in the last few years. <laughs> sure. Well, this album has some great collaborations on it. When you're putting together, did you know it was going to be a collaboration album? Yes. Did you have like the whiteboard of like, if we can get these people, I'm getting a nod. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. When I was writing for it, I was not 100% sure, but then I, one thing led to another and a, a cover came to mind and I did it live a couple times with a friend or two and I thought, well, hold on, this would be kind of fun. And then I started to write a little bit more intentionally. So um, yeah, it kind of found its own way. So were any of the collaborations in person or was it all remote tracks put in can you will not believe because i could not believe only one was done remotely wow which and, one was that that was remote um nikki leonti the song take the chance she moved from la to franklin tennessee during the recording process and so she came back to town and we had scheduled and then the family thing came up and we just could not make it work so eventually she just recorded her vocal in Tennessee, but everything else was done either in Orange County or LA in wow. person. Franklin, Tennessee, 10 years ago, I don't think you hear much about it. Now it seems like one in five major artists lives there. It's so true. When I used to spend a lot more time in Nashville, Franklin was like, so, you know, almost like the secret hotspot. And now, yeah. Now it's yeah. as expensive as Orange County. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly so, right. <laughs> so with uh, the great guests that you have on this album, Tori Kelly, Nikki, Arturo Sandoval, did you get everybody you hoped for or were there still more people you could make happen due to timing? Yeah, there were a couple people that I had um, originally reached out to. That and So it was like 15 songs at first. And so rather than, I will say, rather than decide, oh, we'll just put this person on this song instead. I got everyone I wanted. I just, there were more that I wanted, if that makes sense. So I didn't have to do a whole lot of adjusting. Um, I just had a handful of either no's or, um, you know, scheduling that just didn't, didn't work out. When you have 15 songs for an album, does that mean that you wrote 15, 18, 50? What's your usual, you know, win loss regimen with, with songwriting? Honestly, I usually write enough for a project. I am not one of those artists that has, uh, you know, a pool of 25, 50 songs, you know, and I call and curate and edit. I just usually have an idea for a project and the songs are very specific for that project and I write them accordingly and not always a lot, occasionally they'll there will be one or two that I just decide not to put on, but more often than not, it's, um, it's pretty streamlined. Hmm. So it sounds like you are the kind of songwriter that could just go time to write a song and you write a song rather than going, I need to feel inspired right now. Yeah. It's, I mean, there's definitely an element of that. There's definitely times where I think I better write something and I got nothing. Um, but for the most part, if I, I, I know now kind of sort of how to put myself in that place or the various things that I can do to encourage myself in that into that inspiration zone. Um, and usually a song for me starts with an idea anyway. So I usually 
just capitalize on the idea and move forward with it. So, well, as you mentioned before, the album, it's it's done, but not not a hundred percent fully done because you're going up to the the eleventh hour when it comes to the mixing. How much of your career is planned? otherwise long in advance. And I ask that because some people, they know they're touring a year and a half out. Is it, are you, in other words, are you planned that far out and then the album has to be finished by that date in order for everything to move ahead? No, as a matter of fact, my original release date was February 22nd. And I planned that last September, October, when, you know, like I did a Kickstarter to fund the record and that funded last, I think it was June 1st, May mm -hmm. 1st, June 1st, I don't remember. And so we really didn't begin like recording in earnest until July. Um, so it was kind of throughout the summer, throughout the fall. And I thought, well, I got to have a release date. And I thought February seems far away. Uh, that'll be good. And then in I think it was December, no, January. It was early January of this same year that we are currently in. I thought, you know what? I need to, I need help. I don't want to put this, I'm an independent artist. My last record I put out with no PR, no radio, nothing. And I'm very proud of that work and very sad that it wasn't, you know, a, uh, didn't have a wider reach because that's just the nature of like, you know, social media only PR as an independent artist. So um, I decided to hire a PR firm to help me get the word out. And they were like, well, your release date is in a month. We there's, I don't know really what we can do. And I said, how far back do you want me to push the release date? And so we settled on mid-May and um, bought me a little bit of time. Um, but that was, so that's very last minute. Um, and that's pretty much I moment to moment figuring things out as I go. Um, I guess if there were a label involved, it would maybe be a different story, but there's a lot of freedom. There's pros and cons to being independent yeah. for sure, but there's a lot of freedom, uh, to be able to make these decisions. So, yeah, at this point in, in your career, you know, there's a certain amount of, uh, legacy attached to what you do. So I have to imagine that that's a comforting thing because you're not worried about who's going to like it because in a way people say, Crystal Lewis, yeah, I think I know roughly what I'm going to get. <laughs> like that's, that's meant to be a compliment. Whereas if it's your first or second album, you haven't done it before. It's this worry of, uh, oh, uh, first impression is important. Second impression is important. Or do I have it totally wrong that it's even more nerve wracking at this point? It's very, it's a very curious thing. Um, yes, there is a whole lack of pressure associated with having been around the block. I've lost count of how many times, um, however, or, and, um, because I've decided to change lanes somewhat kind of yeah. doing a little genre swap, um, it has been really difficult the last couple of years. It has been hmm. not not difficult per se, but just I've had some growth that I've had to do at 50 and having been a veteran of the industry to be like, oh my gosh, I'm doing something so dramatically different than I've done before. Is this going to be okay? And so it's been a really interesting um, path to, to walk because it's not, I mean, path is probably the wrong word, like, up. oh, sorry. Um, uphill mountain climb is probably a better, um, a better description because people are funny. They like, they like you in boxes that they are familiar with, you know, and it's hard for some people to exactly, like you said, assume, oh, this, this is what I'm getting because I know her name and I know who this is. And I know the 30 years worth of music that she put out before. Mm -hmm. And so for them to listen to Rhapsody, the last record, and then this new album too, I think people will be like, wait, no, hold, wait, what now? So it's, you stand the chance of losing, you know, people because maybe it's, uh, they just can't handle what the unexpected. Mm -hmm. um, but so far I've been very pleasantly surprised at people's support and um, their delight in, you know, new things. Yeah. It's cool to see that you're keeping the album format alive because a lot of people 
singlesy or EP ish at this point. I don't know if EP ish is the term, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're thinking EPs and you decided album. Did you know outright this is an album and not an EP or a series of singles? Um, yes, I think I did. Um, I, yeah, maybe that's just an old school, like that's how old habits are hard to break kind of a thing when you've been doing it this long. But, mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I put out a couple singles a few years ago because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do and it just worked out that way. But for this project in particular, I just felt like, yeah, it is a lost art. Like there's something really special about writing a series of songs that you maybe in one sense, like the idea of together, we can, obviously it's a collaborative effort. So there's lots of different right. people. We're all doing it together. You know, it makes sense. Um, I love in the end though, looking at the songs on their own and finding this beautiful common thread throughout them that was not necessarily intentional, but again, it kind of made itself in a way. And I think that's just a really beautiful, divine, weird connection. That's, um, you know, it's unique. Does the thought of the next album frighten you? <laughs> no, and it used to. It totally used to. There was a record I did a few years ago and I thought, okay, I'm going to go out with this. Like, I am so done. I'm so over this. I don't really, I'm not feeling it anymore. And mm -hmm. three quarters of the way through that record, I thought, you know what I'm going to do next? I thought, well, that thought really took me off guard. And um, so I think there've been just some dramatic changes for me personally, um, that have sort of refueled my desire and passion and excitement, um, to do what I do. So this is, this is part of that for sure. Well, the last question I have for you comes out of nowhere and it has nothing to do with together. We can, it's, okay. you have a TV recommendation you could pass along if someone needs a new show to start. <laughs> well, look, Darren, I'm looking Okay, I'm going to always recommend Alias because it's my favorite show. Jennifer Garner, um, before she was Jennifer Garner. Totally. It was like Abrams at his like most weird, <laughs> not most weird, I guess he's kind of up also just maintained his weirdness. But I just, it was a show I've watched the entire series five times. Um, I'm always introducing new people to it. There's something about it. I was obsessed with Wonder, Wonder Woman and Isis and Batgirl as a little kid. Mm -hmm. And so there was something about Sydney Bristow as an adult. Like I didn't, I didn't watch it when it first came out. I came to it um, after the series had run its course. Mm -hmm. So I was like firmly into my thirties at that point, probably pushing 40. And I just, it resonated so deeply for me. These childhood things came into play. And um, so I like the story. I like, it's about her and her dad. And yeah, so that's a long answer. <laughs> Alias is my go-to. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking about it. Where was the first time that we saw Jennifer Garner besides Alias? Was it Dude, Where's My Car? Is that what it was? <laughs> I, I remember she was in it as one of the twins. Otherwise, it's kind of <laughs> like Elias took off and then it was never stopping for her. There wasn't a low point except no. for Capital One Bank commercials, but yeah. that's probably <laughs> worth it. And honestly, her social media, her Instagram account is so great. It hits like mom, cooking, cute, sexy, red carpet. Like it's just. I love her. <laughs> and 13 going on 30 holds up. Oh, of course. Duh. Yes. <laughs> well, Crystal, thank you for your time. I hope to see you live in New York in the near future and just keep up all the greatness out there. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. Thanks. Outro cast.